Good morning. Thanks for being here today in this temple of art together on this horrible day. The important thing is that we're together today because being together we are less afraid and bullies prey on fear. But there's a long tradition of people beating back bullies, winning out over fascists through being together in humanity, struggle, and art. I am Noah Fisher. I'm a member of Occupied Museums. I want to acknowledge that other Occupied Museums members are here today. Um, Arthur Palendo, Talbiri, Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Petrobono, and our other member, uh, member Imani Jacqueline Brown, can't be here. She's organizing J20 actions in New Orleans today. There's also Occupy Museum's community here that will come up and speak at the mic today. We have been um, organizing together for the last five years uh, since that great rebellion against American oligarchy met up in Zuccotti Park. Uh, we've been taking the struggle of economic and social e inequality to museums, finding the picture, that picture here in museums. And in many ways, uh, for many people, this building itself represents the sharp edge of inequality through its funders and also through its role in the gentrification of New York City. We're kind of look at, looking at it, part of it here, we're in the middle of it right now. We know where we're standing right now. But today we're standing with the Whitney Museum as, as allies. And we want to thank deeply the role that the museum is taking today and this collaboration that is happening on this horrible day. Especially want to thank Megan Hewer <clears throat> from, she's working from the education department to help the museum realize its civic duty on this day. And we know it takes considerable la labor for a museum to open its doors in such a short notice for an event like this. And thank you to all the art workers, from technicians to social media to janitors to the construction workers who built this building. Thanks also to Adam Weinberg for unambiguously speaking out against Donald Trump from your position as director. Because that is an appropriate and bold response to the transfer of power, that means art and culture are now under threat. And that is something we can see from yesterday's statement that the NEA will be eliminated by the new administration. Today we will hear statements of value from people who are committed to making the world more beautiful and just. In this, I was inspired by Laura Reykjavik from the Queens Museum and the whole staff that went deep instead of going shallow and are working together on a value statement the values we treasure are the same ones that we will fight for. And that we will, and, and finding where we stand and what we'll fight for is the beginning of organizing. That's where we start. Along with the voices that are gonna be embodied here today on the mic, people like Alicia Boyd, who's fighting against gentrification in Brooklyn, who's here today, There's, there, there are, statements from our allies all around the world who are representing artist communities in Hungary, in Poland, Argentina, Colombia. They've sent in statements of solidarity that are published and are in the back. Because we are not the first place on this planet to face leadership that is threatened by diverse expressions that hoards and extracts power from people that is racist, that scapegoats and distracts people. We're not the first ones to face this. And we need advice and we need allies. And we have many allies, more than we think. 
This event is part of the J20 organizing, which includes Art Strike, includes many galleries around New York City that have closed today. We're in solidarity with that. And we hope you will stay with us and um, flow together as a community through different events around the city today, and then end up on the streets. 5 p.m. Foley Square is the call for people to assemble. So I want to thank everyone in the museum for opening up this space and turn it over to Megan. All right. Uh.